what's up everybody um this is me i was just coming to you all um with the video real quick um i had a couple of people ask me questions about about um singing gospel music and for me um just about the fatigue and getting tired and all of that um particularly a couple of individuals that have come to me and they they said expressed that they have a rasp a natural um, raspiness that never really goes away. Um, some people chalk it up to allergies or to different things. Um, and before I even say anything about this video, this video is particularly for gospel music singers and like contemporary singers and people that do a lot of belting and screaming and all of that kind of stuff. This is not necessarily for, uh, I don't know anything about, um, classical singers I have had some classical training so I'm sure at the end of this video there's probably a vocal coach or a um, somebody music teacher throat doctor somebody's like cursing me out but this is <laughs> this is particularly for individuals that are belting and are singing natural chest voice um, a lot okay um, and they have a natural hoarseness to their voice okay um, to chalk it up this is this is the thing okay for an individual like myself my presagio your presagio is a place in your voice where your voice breaks okay so if you were to go uh, from a bottom note all the way up to a certain point there will be a point where you wouldn't be able to go up anymore okay so like uh, right there uh, that right there that's my presagio but I can still go uh, a note like half a step above it clear as a clear as a whistle why Okay, what, what what I've done with my presagio, what a lot of individuals have done with their presagio, is pushed it. What do I mean by that? This is probably where throat doctors and, and, and like anybody watching this as a vocal teacher is probably going to cuss me out. Okay, but, okay, I'm considering more along the lines of vocal stability because in the last three weeks, well, I even say um, two weeks just with different changes that I've made, I've been able to sustain and sing different lines of different songs um, a lot cleaner cleaner and clearer. Now for me, uh, that never leaves. It, it's smooth sometimes, sometimes it's, it's a little bit harsh, but it's very unpredictable. And so what I have done is started to drown myself in different artists, different singers, people in the gospel world that you may not listen to. Like, I don't know. I love Kimberly. I just, I love her to death. And, you know, me and her are going to get married one day. But this is the thing. Like, I listen to Kimberly. You may not listen to the Kimberly, but she has that natural, that natural rasp in her voice. How, um, by classical standards, okay, she would be a uh, alto. Um, however, by gospel standards, there's really no meter or limit to what she does. Why? Because she has learned to push her presagio. Other individuals like uh, Myron Williams, if you don't know who he is, look him up. He's an awesome singer, awesome worship leader. Um, and um, even for my R&B people and my hip-hop people and people that, that sing a little bit and rap a little bit, um, if you are experiencing you know, you're trying to sing melodic lines and you're experiencing a lot of, like, uh, and you don't want that. You want, uh, 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 you want that. You're going to have to drop your voice. Because even when I sing those pure tones, there still is a huskiness behind it. That's just the quality of my voice that's not really going anywhere. So you have to sing through it. Um, if that means... Singing harder, that means singing harder. If that means um, pulling back, pulling back. You have to use your own. Um, it's really up to your judgment as to what your voice needs. Because some individuals, like females, you might need to pull back. For somebody like me, um, it's better just to sing it 
more fuller. Um, nobody greater. It's better to do that as opposed to nobody greater because it gets raspy. Don't pull back. Just even if even if you are singing the line by yourself and it's a part of the song that you have to pull back on, like uh, it's a softer part. Nobody greater. You're just gonna have to drop it greater. Try, drop it. Brandy does it. I listen to Brandy. I listen to Kimberell. I listen to Myron Williams. I love all three of them. And they are perfect examples of how to sing up above that place where your voice breaks. It's called your presagio. Uh, if I do that, uh, that's the part of my voice that breaks. However, I'm still able to go, uh, why? Because I've learned how to push my presagio. That comes with singing above your range, being hoarse a lot, because you're already you already have a natural rasp. And then also even trying to go up above your natural range. Um, I guess I would be like a baritone, but if I'm singing way up here, there's that's weird because that's my natural voice. That's not a falsetto. And so when people um, hear Kimberell and she goes um, in her song Have Faith, she says, I know that you, woo, or like, I know that you, woo. The reason why she's able to do that is because she has pushed her presagio. So that's basically all I'm saying is you just kind of have to sing hard and sing hard and open up. Um, when you get to those higher parts, um, you have to open up and you have to breathe. Um, if you sing through your nose, you're going to have to sing more from here, from your diaphragm. Not from, not that, but you have to poke your stomach out, relax your shoulders, relax your face, and just, ah, and just sing it. If that's what the note is in your tenor, then you, that's what you're going to have to do. Um, it's not, ah, it's not, ah, it's, ah, uh, I'm learning that. Two weeks. I've uh, done some, went through some different instructional videos and done some different practices. I've seen some major, major changes in my voice. Um, yeah. And so, uh, and I'm dead serious about that. So, you have to try that. Um, you have to just open up, breathe. Um, if you do, if you're singing a line by yourself and you start to choke up, I used to do it all the time. I, and, and sometimes I even feel like I'm going to do it, but you just have to sing through it. Uh, uh, you just have to sing through that. I mean, you have to open up and breathe more because you're pushing air through your vocal cords. So you're going to have to have more breath support because the less breath support you have, the more um, friction and the more that, that sound is going to come. Um, people like Brandy. Um, um, she does it all the time. She doesn't ha ha ha. She doesn't have to um, sing like that. Like you know, um, I'll be right here with you. That yo. She's not singing out her nose. She's singing. She's singing supported by her breath. It's just that she's uh, because. That that note, you you might get more of a raspier sound. That's not what she's going for. So, and like I said, this video there may be a vocal teacher somewhere cursing me out, or a classical singer, or something just pulling her hair out. But right now, I'm talking about individuals that do a lot of belting, a lot of screaming. Um, if you know what squalling is, <laughs> squalling a lot of that. Um, um, it's just one of those things. It's like fight or flight. Um, when it comes to a note, either you're going to go for it or you're not. Like you, And if you're trying to get to a place of vocal stability, you're just going to sound a mess for a little while because you're going to be pushing your presagio. You're going to be pushing that break in your voice where you should be singing falsetto. You're actually going to be singing natural. By classical standards, I am a baritone. However, 
um, when it comes down to the music that I want to sing or the music that I have to sing or church or whatever, I sing up above that. So um, this isn't an instructional video. This is just something like kind of like my little two cents. And also um, when it comes down to, um, oh, this is another thing. People ask me about Kim Burrell and about how she's able to hit those, woo, those really high notes. I mean, she's up above that, but the sound and texture of her voice classically would be uh, considered like an alto. Kim Burrell has been singing for a very, very, very long time. And so what she has trained herself to do is to be able to sing up above that place Okay, where her voice breaks. She's pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. She can still sing uh, in her falsetto. However, however, um, it is not necessarily something that is much needed because she's still able to... Uh, she's, still, uh, she's still able to do all that stuff natural and soft because her personality has pushed, 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 pushed. It's pushed way up. And you just have to do that. Don't destroy your voice. You know, there is a time if you wake up and you can't talk, that's not good. But if you wake up and you're kind of hoarse a little bit, <clears throat> get you some coffee and start singing. Because that's going to push that forsagio. Push your range. Push your range. Like I said, classical, by classical standards, baritone. But having to sing B flats and A flats and C's and all of that kind of crazy stuff on a consistent basis it just pushes it and pushes it but at the same time if you see where you can push it more and it gets to a point where you're more comfortable it's just like a muscle it's a muscle this muscle didn't look like this before this muscle was little you know but I pushed it and I pushed it and I pushed it and I didn't tear it it's going to fix itself it's going to restore itself and I know this is a long video but um that's just what I wanted to tell some, a couple of people that asked me about the video. Um, also, if you're trying to figure out how to avoid certain melodic lines that are too high, perfect example, um, um, if you're singing um, um, like an old song like um, um, Tis so sweet, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus and then you get to the next part and just to take it too high just, just to take. Okay, if that's too hard for you, then you can, you have to figure out a way to fl fluctuate in between that melodic line. Um, just to take. Just to take. That's something you can do. Because take might be too high for you. Okay? Um, also, uh, in your private time, you're at home, you're in the car, sing those lines, sing those high lines, sing along with individuals that have a voice texture similar to yours. I love Myron Williams' voice texture. I listen to him all the time, you know. Um, I love Kimberell's voice texture. I listen to her all the time. What I'm noticing is uh, the need for a falsetto is not necessarily something that I have because, I mean, in certain parts of certain songs where some people may be falsing, I don't necessarily need it. Now, however, where we get up, it's becoming more comfortable because I'm pushing that pushing that place in my voice where, where my presagio breaks. Everybody has a presagio, except for maybe uh, like Rashad Roberson or uh, Michael Stampley or somebody like that. They don't have presagios because it's way up here. So that's what you have to do. Push your presagio up, 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 up. And then, and then that breaks. Okay, so before I get interrupted, that's that. Um, I'm going to put a video up of me singing, like probably tomorrow or something. Um, so you can hear what I sound like, because I can actually sing. I'm not just some weirdo. Um, also, follow me on Twitter, um, S-O-N-G-B-O-I-84. Um, I'll have the video link down here somewhere. All right, y'all take it easy.